All right, folks, thank you for um, uh, spending your Saturday with me in front of a computer. Um, hopefully we can get through this um, fairly quickly. Um, we've got lots of things to talk about. Um, we have elections coming up. We have all kinds of stuff. And it has just been a, a crazy year. I'm just hoping that uh, 2021 doesn't say, hey, 2020, hold my beer, watch this. Um, that's, that's, what I'm, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So um, this is our uh, annual meeting online. I hate it. I would like to be, you know, face-to-face, uh, -face, seeing everybody, talking to everybody, and we will do that next year. So let me run down the agenda, exactly what, what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm getting, people are still asking me, how are you seeing people when they and, uh, and admit them to the room? For some reason, they're going into a room. Admit, are you seeing those or do I have to do all that? You're muted. I was seeing them early, but I don't know. Uh, I'm not seeing any now. Okay, I just had I just had one person just um, asked to to join. So okay. Um. So our agenda um for the day we've got this opening remarks. That's what I'm going now. I'm going to try to do a roll call. Um. Basically, okay. That's um since we're on Facebook Live. Um. Just to let you know, if you're watching on Facebook Live. You're only watching, you're not interacting. Um, but what, so with the roll call, those are the folks that clicked onto the Zoom meeting are actually part of the Zoom. We will figure out um, uh, who you are, what, are you representing the club, business, how you're a membership. So when, when we vote, who's, um, um, who, who's here. So, um, after that, we will go over our finances, where we are, um, uh, how we stand, what we look like. We've got some stats uh, to um, go over and uh, cover with everybody. Um, Bo, in between delivering uh, packages about uh, membership, where we are. Uh, then we've got our education piece where Al's going to talk about what we have done in 2020 and looking forward to 2021. Uh, we've got a couple of things to talk about at the Daniel Moon back at your byway and Colmont. I don't think Roger's going to be able to, um, to log in, but he has given me a bunch of things to talk about. Um, then we'll talk about our recreation, which is uh, the two big things, Trail Fest and Dixie Run. What's going on there? Got some great news on some merchandise. Um, that's, I, I'm real excited about that. Yes, there is some yellow pieces. They, they promised me there'd be some yellow. Uh, not all of it's yellow. I can't, they, they won't let me change the, uh, the, the Southern colors to yellow. Uh, and then we have the most important thing. We have elections. Uh, to vote uh, new board members in, and then we will wrap this thing up. I'm getting more messages. Let me see if people are still having trouble logging in. Let me just double check. Give me a few minutes. Cam Dollar says she's ready. Okay, good. So uh, let me try to do, let's go back and we'll do the roll call. So what I'm going to do is let me unshare my screen and we have every then i've got the participant list i'm going to go down the participant list and um we'll see if i can unmute folks and um or you unmute yourself um when i call your name let me know um who are you uh who you're with i mean well who you are and because some people have signed on like you know, as iPhone and um, the club club you represent, how you're a member, are you a member, you know, through a club, direct member, premium member, you know, business member, et cetera. Pam's going to try to, um, uh, to take that down so we know who's here. 
So let's see. Let me just for this, I'll unmute. Let's see. Can I unmute everybody? There's a way to do that, I think. Or I can unmute people as I go. So I'm just going to go down the list that I have here. Um, so we have Darlene. You get to start. Hey, a uh, member of Georgia Bounty Runners, and I'm also a Southern Premium uh, member. All right. Uh, Dave Logan. Member of Rock Solid Jeep Club, uh, membership through the club. I've been premium, but I don't think I am now. <laughs> Pam, Pam, let me know whether I should go up slower or faster, whether how, how you're capturing this stuff. Dave, who was your club again? Sorry. Rock Solid Jeep Club. Okay. Uh, Aaron Roddy. Uh, Ohio River Four Wheelers. Fan a premium member too and uh, vice president of Southern. All right, Anna Satterfield. Hello, um, I'm a member of the Georgia Bounty Runners and that's how I'm a member of Southern through the club. All right, Ashley Warren. Good morning. I am a platinum member of Southern Full Wheel Drive and a little bit of a hybrid of other clubs. Um, Topless in Tennessee and Jeepers Off-Road are my favorites. All right. I like that platinum member. Uh, I've got Bo Rosa. <laughs> <laughs> Bo, are you there? Unmute. I'm going to. Yeah, Bo Rosa with Triad Jeep Club. And Southern Four Wheel Drive. And he's making deliveries. Um, all right. Uh, uh, Brian Weevil. Brian Weevil, Triad Jeep Club. Okay, Triad Jeep Club. All right. And I'm a member through the club. All right. Uh, Byron Roberts. In, a member of Kentucky Crawlers and just a member through the club. Okay, Kentucky Crawlers. Great. I just have a one name here, Claire. Okay. Yeah. Apparently it's my daughter's. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, technology is not my friend. Uh, name is Donald Rocky. I used to be a member of what was Knox uh, off-road down in Knoxville and a premium member through Southern. Okay, great. Uh, David Terrafay. I'm the uh, current director for Friends of Uari here in North Carolina and also the president of the Carolina Rover Owners Club. Uh, so I'm a member through the, through the club. All right. Um, for some reason, these names are jumping around on me. Uh, Don, all it says is Donald. There's a, is there a Donald on here? Yeah. Uh, not sure if it come through before, but uh, Donald Rocky used to be a Knox four wheel drive down in Knoxville. Oh, okay. So yeah. you changed from Claire to Donald all of a sudden. Yeah, somebody, somebody changed it, <laughs> which is good. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, Jay. I was just trying to get it straight for us. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll change it. For some reason, things, okay. things are changing. All right. All right. I have Don's phone. Okay. That'd be Don Hall. I'm a member of Triad Jeep Club. All right. Um, Doyle Punches. Yeah, premium member, also a member of Carolina Trailblazers, um, rock solid. And I don't know if Southern Jeeps is still a member. Of um, Doyle, and you've got somebody sitting next to you. Good morning, Gary Parsons, member of rock solid Jeep Club, premium member and past president of Southern. All right. Uh, let's see. Esther Newcomb. 
Hi, um, premium member and a member of um, Hampton Roads Youth Club. All right. Jim Berliner. Jim, I, I see your name. Can you say anything? You're muted right now. You need to unmute yourself. Okay, I'll speak for Jim until he chimes in here. Jim's the president of Trick and Traction, uh, Jeep Club, a member of Southern through the club, and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and he drives a green Bronco. Right. I got John Plaza. Good morning, all. John Plaza, co-vice president, Southern Four Wheel Drive member of East Tennessee Four Wheel Drive and Rabbit Rock Club. All right, uh, Justin Stanley. Uh, Justin Stanley, I'm part of Trick and Traction East Tennessee unit, and I am a premium member. All right, good. All right, I have Kevin. Kevin, is that uh, is that the Kevin I know? That is the Kevin you know, Jay. Good morning. Good I'm morning. a member of the, member of Ohio River Four Wheelers and Rock Solid, and have the uh, membership through those clubs. Didn't you just become president of Ohio River Four Wheelers? That's that's the rumor, but I don't officially take over until January. Okay. All Outstanding, right. Mr. Aaron Roddy. Yes, I, I try to pay attention to what's going on. Excellent, excellent work, sir. All right. Um, Melanie, I have a Melanie. That's all I have. Melanie O'Connell. I'm with Rock Solid Jeep Club and I'm a member through the club. All right. Uh, Michael Richardson. Uh, morning, Jay. Um, yes, Good Michael. Morning. <laughs> Michael Richardson. Uh, President of American Jeep Club Project and affiliated with Southern Four Wheel Drive through uh, membership. All right. All right. I have got uh, uh, Randy Rosa. She's over there uh, uh, delivering mail. <laughs> you're you're muted. You're muted, Randy. Sorry about that. A uh, member with the Triad Jeep Club and recently became a premium member this year. All right. Thank you. Uh, Scott Pope. Oh, I already know all his crap. <laughs> okay. Pam's already got all his stuff. He doesn't have to talk. Got it. Oh, we don't. <laughs> Milltown Jeepers premium member. <laughs> Uh, Walter Schaefer. Hello, good morning. Um, technically, still on the uh, East Tennessee Full Wheel Drive Club roster, um, member and premium member since inception. All right. Um, I have a Spartacus. Hi, this is uh, Tom Newcomb. I'm with the uh, Hampton Roads Jeep Club as well, and I became a premium member this year. All right, thank you. All right, um, Al, Al Sweeney. Al Sweeney, I'm a member of Trick and Traction. I'm vice president of Trick and Traction uh, Jeep Club in South Carolina and director of education for Southern Pro Wheel Drive Association and a premium member. All right. Um, uh, I better I guess I better do me. I'm Jay Bird. I'm uh, a member through the Georgia Bounty Runners. I'm also a premium member uh, as well, and uh, past president of the Southern Four Wheel Drive Association and a president of the association. I don't know how I can be both like that, but apparently I can. Um, did I miss anybody? Okay, so if you're watching on the Facebook live stream. Um, all you can do is watch. You can't participate. But if you are on the um, Zoom call, did I miss anybody? Um, some of the names were jumping around. So I wanted to, I, I don't know if I uh, uh, missed anybody. So 
all of a sudden I have a coastal ARS trying to come on join. So did I did I miss anybody? Speak now. All right. Well, let me. Jay, I think some people came in uh, right there. I, I was letting them in. Don's Hall, maybe. Do we get Don? Don's Hall? No. Uh, Don's Hall, would you let us know how you're a member, what club you're with, or uh, direct? We're just trying to get everybody down. Yeah, I'm. Uh was also on Don's phone, so somehow it got changed. Um, oh, so with a member Triad Jeep Club. Okay. Right. So it got okay. Got it. All right. Well, let me go back and share my screen, and let's get into this stuff. Thank you, everybody, for uh, spending the day with us. Um, let me go back over. And we'll talk about, let's see. We'll talk about our financials, where we are. So last year um, had a, um, um, you know, wonderful budget. We ended up the meeting. We figured out this is what our budget was last year. We figured we were going to have a couple of events. We were going to sell some merchandise. We got membership. We got we were going to give away money to grants, all this kind of stuff. And then we had a leadership meeting where we, you know, got all these grandiose plans. And then they shut down um, the country. We couldn't have Trail Fest, and that that made half our money not come in and we were scrambling, trying to figure out what we were going to do, all that kind of stuff. Uh, glad we put Dixie Run together. So um, when you compare what we, um, what we actually did to our budget, you got to realize it's 2020. So if you look at events, we had planned to do $85,000 in, in events, and um, we only brought in $23,000, you know, but we only had one event. Uh, membership dollars were down. Um, we did um, sell shirts and sweatshirts, and we added added to uh, selling merchandise. So that was that was a good positive thing. But our income for last year was about fifty thousand dollars, which is almost cut in half um, from what we had had um, budgeted. But then our events were actually cut in half. Um, our expenses, some of them had to stay the same. Some of them were cut down because of um, not having to, to spend. We did not um, to give as much money, uh, grant money. Most of that uh, grant money was to the Daniel Boone Back at Your Byway. Um, some of the uh, professional fees went up, uh, cost of membership, you know, trying to, especially the premium membership, sending out hats and shirts, et cetera. Um, so, um, you know, also what we spent on events was less. So there's some goods and bad, but um, bottom line, we're, we're about $5,000 off where we were, you know, less in the, in the checking account right now. So we have got $30,000 in our checking account, $15,000 in savings, um, we've got about $46,000 in total funds. Now we've got a couple of um, things. We are still waiting on a uh, $5,000 um, check from the um, meet and greet ride for the Daniel Boone Back at Your Byway. Just um, that is um, to go to our grant program. So um, we're, we're waiting on that. That should be coming in the next couple of weeks. We also have a few outstanding bills um, that we need to uh, cover before the end of the year. Um, there's um, a, a small legal and an accounting bill um, that we have to take care of before the end of the year. And um, there's, um, Brent still has not um, sent us all the last final bills for Dixie Run. So we've got a couple of those going out. But in a year where we, couldn't have a 
our um, uh, uh, event, our normal events, we couldn't do something normal. Um, it is, um, you know, it, it was his crazy, a crazy event, uh, year. Um, with that, um, does anybody have any questions about the numbers? They are what they are. It's not, uh, you know. Hey, Jay, I have a com comment on this. Yes. Um, I, I keep hearing a rumor around the campfires that Southern Four Wheel Drive Association is broke because we've spent too much money. I'd like to put that to rest here and kind of explain to everybody we have less money than we do in the past because we've had less income than we've had in the past. But by no means are we broke. Um, we have $46,000 in the bank right now. I yes, don't, sir. don't consider that broke. Um, you know, we didn't have Trail Fest and, you know, I want to use that money judiciously. I don't want to... Uh, you know, go out and spend money willy nilly because we have lots. So, um, you know, we we are not uh, we are not broke, but we just need to be careful. You know, just just good stewards of the money. These this is money that we have raised to try to keep trails open, and I think we just need to you know be careful with where we spend the money. We will be voting on one uh, one, one uh, grant proposal today, so um, I you know we'll we'll see, but we're not we're not we're not broke. We have been in a worse situation right after Teleco, um, et cetera. So that's where we are. So what I would like to share with you now is um, all right. Let's see. Uh, my proposed budget for 2021. So this is what I'm proposing. Um, I think we will have, and, and I, I took these numbers based on having a full year um, with events, having, having at least two events with some meet and greet rides, um, having our membership back um, full steam um, selling merchandise um, with expenses, uh, you know, planning grant money to give it away, planning to get back to, uh, you know, make sure that uh, our other organizations, we can, we can join those. Um, and actually, you know, taking, you know, what our professional fees are, which is, you know, accounting, et cetera, the membership cost of, you know, the premium members, um, event cost, uh, just trying to take what we've done in the past, but kind of setting aside last year. Um, so the, the big one, you know, like the big one, event insurance, DNO insurance, et cetera. So that is um, my proposed budget. Any questions on that? Because um, I'm going to be asking uh, a poll and basically, you know, a lot of that is going to, you know, if they shut down the economy again, which hopefully they, um, you know, because our first event is not until um, 1st of May. So we should be back going by then and be able to have stuff. So with that, I'm going to try to do a poll. Um, Al, can you do a poll? Because it says I'm logged in from another device and your polling session is inactive. I will try. Give me just a second here. Which one? This is a uh, budget. I have I have membership. There's one for budget. Okay. Simple one question, Paul. Uh, answer yes or no, whether you approve it or not. And I'll point out, let me remind, remind folks that I think everyone said they're a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive. Uh, if you're not a member in some way of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association, you're not eligible to vote. We ask you not to vote. 
here on the wall. There it is. Let's see, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen people have approved. Fifteen. We'll, we'll give it just a few more seconds here. Only fifteen people have voted. We got thirty-one people in the meeting. Right. Uh, Gary and Doyle are together. They'll only get one vote, but if they chime in, uh, we'll we'll add theirs manually. We just submitted the vote, but we we approve. Okay. So whatever numbers we'll come up with, it's going to be a, with a plus one. <clears throat> Darlene's drinking coffee. I don't know why she's not sharing with the rest of us. Okay, it's been open for a minute. We have 25 votes. We have 31 people in our meeting. You want me to end the poll, Jay? I think we can end the poll. Okay. Don't start the poll over. Understand. I'm going to share the results to the group. I'm going to click on share results. And I think everyone should be able to see it. For some reason, maybe, I, maybe not I'm, you, Jay. I'm not seeing it, but. Uh... Yeah, we expect that. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Let's on. Thank you. So I, I'm so I'm I'm assuming uh, that the budget passes. The budget. The numbers indicate the budget passes. Okay. So let me share my screen again, and um, we will move on to Bo. Are you out delivering? Are you around? Bo? Yeah, I uh, give me two seconds. I'll pull over and I can chat for a minute. All right. So um, now we need to stretch while he pulls over in in Mux deliveries. If y'all don't know, Bo is, uh, Bo is the Purple Santa. He's out making deliveries right now with FedEx. Mandatory working and uh, membership director of uh, Southern and is going, I, I've got the, uh, the PowerPoints that you did. So I don't know okay. if you can see, see the screen. Yes, I can see the screen. Um, if things are not too loud. So, uh, membership was tough this year. Um, uh, a lot of clubs did not have an opportunity to, uh, to sell merchandise or collect dues from their members. Um, which then they didn't have membership uh, funds for Southern. Um, if your club is in that situation, I highly recommend you reach out to Jay and I so we can discuss it. Um, but for club membership, the dues are 250 a year. Um, you get one vote at the board of directors meeting, which is today. Um, you get access to the insurance for one event a year. Um, all members of your club get an individual level membership. So that, that individual membership is $10 per person. If your club has 25 members, you're there. You have just paid for your entire club membership and the extra benefits. Uh, I, for my club and my admins, we update our club roster from our cell phones or an iPhone. Uh, and that's really easy to do. So if you are a current member club um, and need to update your roster, add people, drop people, um, super easy to do from your phone uh, or an iPad or just on the uh, internet as it may be. Uh, there are a number of businesses that offer uh, member discounts and I'm working on a couple of surprise companies that are going to offer us a discount and then you know the business members every time you talk to a southern four-wheel drive business member mention that you're a, a southern four-wheel drive member and uh, you might get a surprise pop discount from them there's currently 1709 club level members that's down from last year just because some clubs weren't able to uh to pay the 2020 dues These are our clubs with current dues. Um, if you don't happen to see your club, the invoice might've got missed through uh, turnover with your admin 
or you know you might not have had the opportunity to raise the funds um but these are the clubs that are paid up current and, and the number of members that they have if you see we've got clubs you know all over the map from 200 plus members to actually one club that has one member and is still a member of southern four wheel drive so we're all the southeast into ohio north carolina georgia tennessee um, we have a good representation uh, across the southeast all right these are our business members and our business members are, are critical um, we try and promote them as much as we can and a lot of them do offer you know a membership discount so if you're a member of southern four-wheel drive and you know you're looking to buy uh you know an axle a car uh even a car get your stuff dynoed we have companies that are members of southern four-wheel drive that will actually do that um they'll hook you up with a little bit of a discount or some of them a lot of bit of a discount uh, most of the discounts are hidden behind Southern Four Wheel Drive's membership log on. So these discounts are not available to just anybody uh, to use. They're available only to members. So it's one of those things, membership has its benefits. So Bo, you said those are, those are hidden. You, only members that log on to the website can see those. Is that what you mean? That is correct. Only members ah. that log in to southernfourwheeldrive.org and the membership tab will be able to see those discounts. Got it. So here's the total member count. The big one that I really would like us to work on is our inactive number. These are members of clubs that have dissolved or uh, people that just haven't paid their dues. Um, even the $10 individual uh, membership uh, dues paying member go into the in inactive members. Um, that's a huge group that, you know, like I say, if you, if you're in a club with two, with 25 members, um, it's actually cheaper in the long run, just to become a club level member. And uh, if you have 26, then somebody's getting in free and plus you get the other benefits. The uh, contacts number, those are people who have never been a member, but have participated in an event such as Dixie Run was open to non-members or any other, um, anything that they've registered their email address is just the contact. Um, our premium members, of course, that uh, that number is, is pretty strong and they are definitely supportive of Southern um, those guys really reaffirmed their, their uh, belief that Southern is a good thing with the extra membership. All right. Um, I think that's the last slide you gave, you gave me. Does anybody have any comments or anybody have anything, um, questions to Bo um, about uh, membership? Yeah, I got a question about premium members. Okay, go ahead. So do we renew at the beginning of the year or do we renew at the uh, point in time in which we became a premium member? So our anniversary date. Yes, I think, um, Bo, I think I can answer this question. Uh, the question was, uh, when do you renew your premium membership? And that's on an anniversary date. And uh, there'll be, there'll be, uh, He'll either send out an invoice or email will go out to you when your when your anniversary of, of when you signed up will be. Hey, Jay, this is Gary. I, I saw a thumbs up. Okay, Gary. It does get a little confusing because our members get uh, invoices that say that their Southern member is expiring. And of course, you know, I we, we give the check at the first of the year, which I'll be giving mine to Ted next week for rock solid. But uh, it, it might need to be a little bit more clear on the invoice that this is your premium membership is coming to an end. I can tell you that might help. All right. Okay. 
I have captured that. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions for Bo? Let him go uh, make his deliveries. I don't know if he's going to hang with us or he's going to uh, uh, be delivering. All right. We will move on. Oh, no, no. I got premium member gear. I'm sorry. I thought there was Bo. There's one more for you. Premium member gear. All right, uh, I'll speak about premium member gear. Uh, COVID really hurt us here. Uh, it was pretty frustrating um, and a little bit easier. Um, but so the membership gear year isn't, uh, is not December to December. It's Dixie Run to Dixie Run. Um, I guess it's been that way since I've been a member with the new gear coming out at Dixie Run. Uh, for 2020, we had hats and shirts um, and it's next to impossible to keep, uh, you know, guessing at, at who needs what size shirt and keeping that in stock so we can order it and we can't order one at a time for a special size or anything like that. So for 2021, um, you've noticed that some stores say that they are limited on coins, we are not. We have gone to the 2021 Challenge coin and the Legacy hats, which are um, Clemson, Tennessee, hunting orange. Um, our costs are as, as listed. We pay about, um, we pay right at $11 a hat. Jay's got an example of the coin. They are two-sided. Um, you can use double-sided sticky tape to, uh, they're pretty cool. They got a little bit of heft to them. They got a good thickness. If you uh, if you collect challenge coins, these are the ones to get. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so the coin, the the hats run us about eleven dollars. The coins run us about four and change. Um, shipping runs between seven and eight dollars, depending on where in the country you live. So that's about $25 worth of cost to Southern um, for the premium membership gear. And the membership is only $50. So really the, the we're not making much on premium membership, but you know, it's great that, that the premium members affirm their membership through that program. Right, right. Plus, you know, to be a premium member, we have, you know, at our two events, we have a premium raffle that in the past, no promises, but in the past, BFG and Warren um, have both stepped up um, with some pretty nice gifts to the premium, uh, to the premium raffle um, in the past. We would, we would hope that continues. Um, and so that's one of the bigger benefits of being a premium member is, is, you know, you might be able to tires instead of one of, you know, thousands and thousands of, of raffle tickets, one of 500 or whoever shows up at the, uh, at the premium member breakfast. So let me go back to sharing my screen. All right. Thank you, Bo. Go deliver some packages. All right, we've got a few things um, to talk about. I'd like to talk about some web stats, although uh, I was given some other things right at the last minute. Let me see if I can, um, uh, so Walter, let me see if I can get, I don't know if I can get those. You can't get the images up there. Uh, it's uh, I can pretty much uh, tell you that uh, what we've seen uh, over year to year, um, the uh, data that I extracted um, is looking at uh, you know from 2019 this point uh, over. Uh, we're looking at uh, t total traffic over uh, eight percent. Um, uh, let's see the uh, 
eight percent total growth um, with a uh, number that equates at uh, forty six thousand, uh, a little over forty six thousand unique visitors uh, from twenty nineteen to twenty twenty. Um, and that is primarily uh, sourced through uh, search, uh, 22,000 of that results uh, from search uh, engine driven um, direction. And uh, most popular content uh, continues still to be on our website, the uh, Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway. Um, with it consuming 12,500 uh, of those visits, um, specifically uh, time spent on that page. Um, and then uh, riding destinations and event calendar also uh, are notable, uh, I guess, traffic worthy pages uh, consuming the rest of the bulk of that traffic. Um, the uh, another interesting thing that uh, I've seen uh, consistently year after year uh, with the Danny Boone Backcountry Byway, um, the there's a small link on there uh, that we uh, added a PDF map, um, which is not intended to be an actual map. Uh, it actually just is used as a reference uh, and stated so in that way. But um, it has about two thousand downloads. Uh, each year uh, of that map. Um, and uh, I know there's also links and directs uh, of the Cardo Tracks um, map and website in that same page. Um, and I don't know what the, his stats are. I've reached out before, but I'm not clear. Uh, he didn't actually have a way to measure um, that part of it or that dynamic of his uh, so, uh, but it is noteworthy that um, we're seeing 2,000 people annually going out to our website and downloading this small scale map, uh, again, used solely as a reference, um, but people obviously are putting it to some practical purpose to keep downloading it. Uh, so that might be something that we could look at um, further enhancing or trying to uh, develop further uh, considering its traffic and attention in the future. Um, and then the other uh, noteworthy thing uh, that we've seen uh, transition over time uh, in the years uh, from mobile uh, and desktop uh, that used to be five years ago, slight advantage, uh, more people using desktop computers to view our website. Um, now that number of Forex is exceeded by uh, mobile. Uh, uh, so 25 out of 14 um, uh, of those thousand views uh, are coming right off of a mobile uh, device, be it a tablet or a smartphone, uh, something to that effect. But laptops and desk, uh, excuse me, actually tablets are way, way down off the list. So primarily smartphones is uh, how everybody is uh, looking at, or at least the far majority of it now. And so that's just an important consideration of how um, and when people are accessing our site. Hey, Walter. Yep. Back up just a second to the map and Carter track. I did get some numbers from Jake. Last year okay. he sold, last year he sold 1,701 Daniel Boone backcountry byway maps. And he also helped us with the URE mapping down there. Uh, Southern sort of sponsored part of that. And they sold 136 maps last year this year when I say last year i mean this year 2020 of uari and the yard the good thing about the uari maps is uh 2019 numbers lumped together and uh carter tracks is going to donate back 20 percent of the profit for the sales of those maps now granted they're not as big as daniel boom back country byway but that's a few dollars that's going to come back to offset the grant money we gave him to mount that those those trails down there. Sorry to interrupt. I just just no. That's, that uh, thanks for sharing because I had uh, not heard those stats yet, and uh, I know it's something I'd be uh, interested to share. Absolutely. Thanks, Al. Uh, what's up on the screen here? 
Um, those are some um, stats that uh, Al got me. Oh, this is the Facebook. And th this is the Facebook. And, and I think, uh, Al, um, if I look at it, it's just the last month. Uh, not, this doesn't say that, but our, our, what, what reaches most of the people through Facebook is video followed by photos and then just up in the status. Mm -hmm. but, if I, but if I go to the next screen, um, yeah, like I said, it's November 6th to December 3rd. You look at the one, that's 22,000 people we have reached with our Facebook with our Facebook posts with uh, an engagement, which means somebody either clicked something, commented, shared it, did something, 22,000 or 2,219 people actually had an engagement with that. I mean, that that is, um, that is phenomenal. Um, yeah, you see the uh, spike there indicating up 500% in that month period. Uh, and that's um, evident usually when we see these, um, like the TechNet launch again, uh, is probably what is uh, driving those numbers. Uh, we also see those type of spikes whenever we launch uh, events um, like Dixie Run Trail Fest um, at, at the initial launch period. And then right at the final um, you know, week or two, we see large spikes uh, similar to that type of thing. Hey guys, this is Gary. Just a quick question. Uh, one of the 22,000 that have reached out and done something, can you tell who is repeat and who may be new? Yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's more in-depth tools to decipher that type stuff. Um, generally, it comes into um, buying ad space, marketing from them. Um, but uh, they have infinite depth of um, demographic um, details um, that you can decipher and um, quite finely tailor um, how it is you choose to spend um, ad um, costs uh, through Facebook. Um, but most of that stuff is concealed um, under that um, entry point where you have to spend money uh, with Facebook in order to gather that data in which we have yet to do. We've done everything at this point in time organically. Okay. He's just Al, you're, you're breaking up. I'm sorry. I was asking Walter to define organic. Uh, organic, yeah. So um, as, a, as opposed to um, paid for um, outreach, um, where you can uh, quickly obtain um, stats by um, basically paying for them through Facebook and, and, and Instagram. Now that Facebook owns Instagram. Um, and, um, you know, it, it can get quite expensive, um, but it is a successful tool. Um, yet it is not one that we have uh, invested um, any money into uh, yet to date. Um, We've, we've done everything without any out-of-pocket expense um, to uh, generate these numbers. Also, hey, I think that, that answers the question. I appreciate it. Yep. Also, to point out, this is how Facebook makes their money uh, is of gathering analytic data. The, so there, there's lots of tiers of stuff. Google does the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really almost a little scary what they know about you. <laughs> um, Walter, this is Mike. Um, I've, I've watched some of the, the, some of the insights um, through Facebook for Southern Four Wheel Drive um, based on like their 30 day kind of readouts. 22,000 is kind of the bottom end of where we've been at, right? Recently, kind of leading up to this, we've been upwards of like 40 to 60,000 views a month, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah uh, this, this is just, this is just the last 30 days and we only had basically what two tech nets, you know, right. so we weren't, we weren't, and we didn't have Dixie run. We didn't have much going on. Um, yeah. You'll I see mean, peaks and valleys like this, um, you know, periodically when you just capture that, that time frame like that. 
Yeah. So what we do with Morrison's Outdoor Adventures, as far as the paid portion, is we um, do some very specific targeting. We worked with a social media guy, and we do the paid boosts. Um, like if I have a class or an event, then I will donate a certain amount, uh, not donate, but pay a certain amount of budget, right? So if I'm doing a level one class, I will do a hundred dollars towards it to boost it. And I will target people that are specifically interested in off-roading or, you know, if I'm looking for a specific vehicle, like a Jeep, then they're specifically interested in Jeeps and stuff like that. And normally, you know, somewhere in like the hundred dollars range, I can expect to reach somewhere around about 5,000 people. Um, you know, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on the area. Uh, you know, that, that kind of gets changes the numbers, but for about every hundred dollars you spend on an event, you can expect to reach about 5,000 people. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. and right now we're reaching a lot without spending any money. We may want to spend yes, money yes. in the future, especially if we want to promote Dixie Run or Trail Fest really big. But at this point, you know, right now we're getting, you know, this leads me into my next topic, which is why are we getting all this reach? Uh, I think, uh, thank you, Walter, for, uh, for, for the update. The, the why in it, and I, I blame it all on these two guys, Al and Michael Morrison, and our Southern Forward Drive Tech Net. It this year it has been just uh, phenomenal. If you haven't taken part in the Tech Net, if you haven't seen the Tech Net, I mean, just it 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 is. I, I can't say enough good things about Al Sweeney and Michael Morrison. And what they have done for Southern Full Wheel Drive Association, what they have done—I uh, mean, I'm 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 gushing for for Michael and and Al because of what they've done. So I'm going to turn it over to Al to talk about what he's done with the TechNet, all that kind of stuff. So Al, I'm just going to uh, let me know when you want me to 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 move the screen forward to your first slide, and I will I will do that. So take it away, Al. Okay, stay right there on that screen for just a second. Um, we, in, in 2019, we, we put together a plan for what we were gonna do in education in 2020. And like everything else, it got changed because of COVID. Uh, so um, March and April, uh, Michael Morrison and I came up with this idea that let's, let's try to do something online. We didn't know what we was gonna do. We, we went a little piece of software called Be Live. Uh, Jay let us subscribe to it. It's twenty something dollars a month, and we started this TechNet. And the idea was to get online and talk. Well, we it got really good traction from the very beginning. Um, Michael Morrison is absolutely the best off-road instructor in the world. Maybe second only to Dave Logan, but maybe not Dave, sorry, okay? Uh, and and we've done a really good job. Last, and I'm gonna say last year because it was 2020, this last year. We uh, we had guests, we, we, Mike, when, when we couldn't arrange guest speaker, Mike would just step up and fill in. And you should unmute your, mute your microphone. Mr. Morrison, so that you can chime in here and correct me when I'm, or just chime in. But the, uh, but I mean, we had we had people from ARB, we had people from uh, from BF Goodrich, we had Warren, uh, our, our our Warren marketing engineer, or whatever whatever Brad's title is. He actually sat down and took a winch apart for us and showed us how the brakes work, showed us the internals of that. Uh, we had Dan Gregg, who's driven his Jeep all the way down to South America, across the ocean, all the way around uh, Africa. We, we just had a bunch of great guest speakers, and they did, they got a lot of following. Uh, started out with just a few viewers. We did a tech net, not before life. 
we it was hosted at Clemson Four Wheel Drive Center, and we had Sunex Tools, the engineer from Sunex Tools that uh, designs these things, sat there. Michael, Paul Connor, and Chris from Sunex. Is that the right name? Chris from Sunex. Uh, talked about tools. Hours we had had five thousand people reached by that uh, by that technet. And I mean, natural I mean, retail. Al, 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 yeah. Al, hang yeah. on a second. Al, you're you're yes. you're 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 fading in and out a little bit. Um, I have terrible network connections. So okay, so just just fading in and out a little bit. If people didn't hear in the last just two days from that one technique, we've had over five thousand um, views. Of, of that technet. I mean, that is, I mean, that's in, in two days. Phenomenal. Okay, Al. Um, okay. Try to get I, get it, I, get it, I get excited. I'll slow down a little bit too. Okay. Uh, so, enough about technet. We're going to continue technet through 2021. Uh, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do one more this year, then we're going to take a break for Christmas. And then starting in January, every two weeks, we'll do a technique and uh, we'll publicize it. Walter's done a great job of helping us publicize our technets through the web page and social media and in general. So we'll we'll get going with that. In 2021, you can just flip over to the next slide, Jay. Let me see what the next slide was. I probably covered most of the stuff. Yeah, I, and, and back to education. BFG and Warren have stepped up in 2020 and sponsored our Southern Four Wheel Drive education program. Uh, they, they've given us sets of tires to give away. They've given us uh, Warren accessories to give away. And they've just, they've just done a great job. And they've both committed to do that in 2021 as well. So we'll be giving away a set of tires at Trail Fest, where people that have watched our tech nets will be eligible to win. So uh, that's just great. We need to thank them. You guys thank them every chance you get. Okay. Um, and I, the bullet here says Michael Morris has become our lead instructor. He's just been he's been awesome, Mel. Uh, say something, Mike. Say hello, Mike. Hey, um, I, I think part of the the big thing about the tech net kind of moving forward with what we're doing is Al and I are quickly running out of, of ideas and stuff like that to put on the tech net. So we really need some help with getting presenters and um, um, ideas for the tech net, right? There's, I think... One of the big things that's kind of attributed to the the tech nets kind of uh, success is the fact that we have really focused kind of on beginner information and things like that. So it has drawn in a lot of a lot of people who are getting into this sport. Um, and one of the things I found really amazing was that Dan Greck was one of our highest uh, uh, tech net that we had, which was really focused on overland. Um, you know, that was a heavily overland centric kind of tech net. And I think that's something that we may want to really try to focus on in the future. Okay. Mike, uh, Go ahead. Dave Logan, um, the, we've shot nine videos uh, several years ago now, and I know that Jake has done one uh, we have the rollover video and so forth and i'm wondering if those even though those videos may not be appropriate for a tech net if the topics are um so something to consider we already have some materials that may form a foundation at least for a script and dave those topics are relevant and i think you'll see in 2021 we'll revisit some of those topics that are that are in those videos uh i was i don't i don't know if i said this or not but walter is also archived I'm, i call it archive published our technet videos on our youtube channel 
right right beside all those uh, videos that we already had out there. So we're we're building that video archive for future reference for people, and uh, and we'll take a look at those topics. Thanks, thanks again. Uh, we'll we'll for sure look at those. What's next, Jay? Uh, your uh, twenty twenty one education goals. Yeah, our goals for twenty twenty one. We don't want to make education just be totally just our tech nets. Uh, Mike and I have talked. Uh, we're developing uh, curriculums, that's what, what we call it, where it's a series of lessons that we plan to try to take people through to get them to a point uh, to where they, they get this little sticker that goes on the winter window of their vehicle and says, hey, I'm a certified off-road geek. Uh, I don't know what it'll say, but something. Um, and we, 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 uh, we, we want to give people more. Uh, we we've we had an idea last year <clears throat> to get with some dealerships and give them southern information and invite new vehicle owners to to training classes. We hope to be able to do that if COVID lets us this year in 2021. So those are those, we we've got a broader view of education for southern uh, than just the tech nets. So uh, I just wanted to say a little bit about that. Uh, we've got a formal, you can switch slides, Jay. We've got a formal uh, formal plan for how we're going to do that. We've got our, our education team. Uh, we've got Mike and I are co-directors of education. We've got Eddie that does some of our videography and editing. Um, then we're going to be getting subject matter experts to come in and help us to do instruction or do put together uh, lessons and blah, blah, blah. So uh, we, we do have a formal way to address our education program. And we had it in 2020, we just didn't execute. So we're gonna continue on with that in 2021 and try to execute. And next slide. Ah, I don't have to talk anymore. So you don't have to listen <laughs> to me anymore. Are there, are there any, uh, any questions for Mike or I about education or Mike, you want to chime in there and add some stuff. Morrison Outdoor Adventures uh, is Mike's little, Mike's company. Uh, Mike and Sarah runs that and they're, they're trying to get people outdoors and we're trying to support them and they're trying to support us as we go through this thing. Mike? Yeah, so, you know, this was originally the TechNet, you know, it really was kind of a harebrained scheme to give people a thought or something to do while they were kind of trapped at home. I, I never imagined that it would be this popular. Um, so continuing in 2021, I think it, it is important to continue it. I don't think, like Al said, that we'll try to do the, the weekly technique because that is really tough and really hard to do. Um, but I would like it, again, if COVID will allow it, that we look at having some training centers, you know, like one in Tennessee, one in Georgia, one in North Carolina, where we can put on like a, a weekend um, training with Southern Four Wheel Drive Association where people can physically come uh, and receive kind of more in-depth training with their vehicles and practices. If we can't, then, you know, maybe we look at another avenue. Alice had a great idea of using Zoom to do that. Um, to actually put on some classes that people would actually pay Southern Four Wheel Drive Association for um, to come and kind of be able to go through those classes. And I think that's, that's an avenue really that will help Southern fulfill that education aspect um, of their core mission. I, I, like I said, I think that uh, Al and Mike have, have really stepped up and is making uh, Southern Full Drive Association. I mean, we're relevant. We've got relevant information. We got, it, it's engaging. People are, people are seeing, seeing Southern. And, and I think, um, I just want to say thank you to Al and Mike for doing such a, such a fabulous job there. Thank you. Yeah. 
All right, let me go back to sharing my screen. Where is that button? All right. I think that said break. You think what, Al? I think the next screen said it's break time. Oh, uh, it's break time. <laughs> Do we need to take a quick break? I mean, I, I mean. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I think Al was taking a break. Um, we're, um, so um, the next area uh, of our core mission, and, and you'll see that my, uh, my presentation is the three, the three core missions of, of Southern Full Drive Association, which is basically education, conservation, and recreation. So, you know, I think we have hit it out of the park with our education. Um, our conservation, um, we developed um, a, a grant program in the last few years that um, um, has been uh, phenomenal. Um, and, you know, it's all about trying to keep trails open for future generations. Uh, clubs members can apply uh, for Southern Four Wheel Drive Association for a grant, which we can then help keep trails open. Now we've got uh, two main areas that we focused on this past year. Of course, there are other areas across the country there's, you know, that, that I don't have in here. There's Uari. Uh, there's Beasley Knob um, and some of the uh, private off-road parks that we've actually uh, given grants to, et cetera. Um, but this past year, we, you know, because, you know, we knew money was tight, we kind of kept it um, down to, to basically the, the two big ones that we've been working on, which is the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway and Colmont. Uh, this is a picture of the... Um, the bathhouse and uh, offices that is going up at Colmont uh, now. I don't think Roger is on, but uh, that's, a, that's a picture of it. So let me scroll forward. Let's talk about the Daniel Moon Backcountry Byway. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I had not been to that area of Kentucky and ridden those trails until this past meet and ride and I'm disappointed I haven't been up there before that. I was totally amazed by the trail systems, by the trails, by everything that was there, by the Red River Gorge and, and I can now understand exactly why. It is our most popular map downloaded. It is the most popular map downloaded. You know, it, it's just, uh, a, a phenomenal place, and I'm glad that uh, we play a big part in uh, keeping those trails open. So basically, in the last four years, Southern Four Wheel Drive Association has spent $125,000 uh, to keep the uh, trail systems open, everything from, you know, road repairs to lawsuits. We are getting very close. We've spent, uh, you know, a little under $20,000 this year um, in legal fees because we have um, uh, one court case left uh, on 18 miles of, of, of road. And we are so very close to getting that. Um, it, it's one of the roads where we've got, there's, I think, 18 people, and Aaron, Roddy, you can correct me if I get anything wrong. Um, there's like 18 people along that own pieces of that road. Uh, majority of them are actually Southern Four Wheel Drive Association members that own parts of that road. We are in a legal fight against two of the people on the road. One of them did a bunch of illegal things by digging trenches and uh, putting up barriers and, and actually went to jail because of what they did to the road. Um, 
and the other um, is an out-of-state land use company that that you know, also tried to close the road. Um, like I said, but the county has stepped up, reaffirmed the road, and that's a big thing. Plus, we have you know so many people on the road that need access to their land that they need to keep the road open. Uh, we were supposed to go to trial earlier this year. We were supposed to go to trial in the spring. We think we should win in, in the court, but due to COVID, it has just dragged out and dragged out and dragged out. So we're, we're hoping to have a settlement fairly soon and, and get this behind us. At that point, um, uh, we might be able to step back from spending a whole bunch of money on Daniel and Baxter Byway because one of the things that the DBBB has started is a 501c3 to actually take uh, tax deductible donations. Um, and that's going to relieve the, the burden on Southern um, uh, and, and can help with the maintenance, et cetera, on the, uh, on the road. So that is, that is anything. Aaron, do you have anything I saw? Um, do you have anything to, to add? Um, I mean, I can sort of give a little bit of update. Um, just a few things that happened just recently in the last month. Um, as Jay Bird said, it, with the DBB and a 501c3, um, we actually finished a project a week of the meet and greet ride um, up on the top end of Boz Creek. We repaired a pretty nice sized mud hole that a lot of people were getting stuck in and having to get uh, taken out. So that, that was, um, the rock was taken out and we put all gravel and all that was funded from the 501C3. Um, so nothing came out of Southern Four Wheel Drive pocket, nothing came out of anybody's uh, project. That was all donated funds. Um, one of the other things we've started is um, some of the local shops now around that area, if you happen to visit, are now selling a uh, DBB uh, sticker that you can put on your vehicle. Um, it's $5 for a sticker and we actually get uh, $2.50 back from that. That goes back into the uh, 501C free fund. Um, as of last um, call from the money that we raised from the meet and greet ride and um, what's in there, I think we're looking at about $7,000 what we're working with going into next year for uh, um, being boom back country uh, byway projects. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's, I think that's great. And I've just, I love that area. I, I am, I am ashamed that I have not explored that. Area. I know it's six hours away from my house. It's a long way to go, but, um, uh, I need to spend a lot more time up there. That's what I, um, real quick. Also, um, we're still planning on going for the meet and greet ride this year in case anybody's uh, want to put it on their calendar. And our projected date is November 5th and 6th for next year. Okay. So. And then I, uh, I, one last update um, from that area, if you don't mind. Um, Hollerwood Park, um, that sort of was a uh, private park up there. Um, it was being ran by four counties. Um, three of the counties have backed out, but Powell County, which is um, the big supporter of us up there, has actually decided they are going to pay for the whole lease um, to keep the park open now. So it will be one county, and we expect to be able to do a lot more up in that park area, too. Okay, great. So. Powell County has, has, it, it has stepped up to that land for the park? Correct. They're going to pay the whole lease and the other three counties will be out. So now we only have to deal with one county um, when we want to get things done. Makes it a lot easier. Okay. That's actually, that's, a, that's good news. Yeah. Uh, I doesn't understand. Hollywood Park was a, it was a, it's leased land that the counties have stepped up to lease. And then they have, turned it over to somebody to manage the park. And of course they get the dollars back. The county gets back. So um, it's an interesting way to run a park. Yeah. Um, 
and just with that news, they're actually going to do a 30 year bond. So um, we're looking at at least part being around for 30 years. That's the goal. That's great. Yeah. That's that that's real. That's real good news. Uh, there again, Carter Track is, uh, you know, it's it but beside behind the King of the Hammers, it's their number one. Uh, that's their number one map downloaded. And then uh, it's it's for some reason people are downloading the map off, uh, off of the Southern Four Wheel Drive um, website, and I think it's this little map here. I don't know. This is the you know, on it. You really can't see anything. Um, it it's just a general overview of the area, so um, it's pretty cool. The uh, the actual Carter Tracks map has been updated. Uh, since this picture was posted out on our web page. So it, this, this map is probably, I don't know if it's incomplete or if it's inaccurate, but uh, we, we might order to talk to Carter Tracks and get that updated. Okay. The, map, the map you're looking at is the most recent map. Um, we're still working on adding a few things in, hopefully within the next year. We'll get to add a couple more roads in. Is this the one off of our web page, though? I don't know where I. Okay, it. that's okay. We don't we don't need to iron that out now. Thank you, right. Aaron. Yeah. So, all right, that's Daniel Boone back in your byway. I am I am I, I, I'm happy. You know, I, I can't wait to be able to tell you that the court case is over and everything's settled and and things are looking good there. So. You know, it could be within the next few weeks. So, um, no, no, we'll see what happens. All right, let's move on to the uh, Colmont OHV Park. So, to, to give everybody, you know, I know we've been talking about Colmont for the last 10 or 15 years, but this is a, uh, this has been a long project that is finally coming. Um, to um, fruition, um, the city of Colmont 10, 15, 10 years ago or something like that actually applied for some RTP funds. Um, first time that a city in, in Tennessee had actually applied, they were able, they actually, you know, uh, got the grant um, and was to you know, buy some acreage to um, create an OHV park. They went through some, uh, you know, because you've got three levels of bureaucracy with the RTP fund group, the state group, and the city group. Taken a very long time to get all of this. They have purchased 1,347 acres on the north end of Coppinger Cove. We have actually um, started the construction project. Um, they got the grant and then Southern um, guaranteed uh, in-kind labor. Um, originally it was, we guaranteed $100,000 in in-kind labor, but um, I think that was dropped down to $50,000 in in-kind labor. Um, basically we have almost every weekend a team of Southern Four Wheel Drive Association members working um, at, at uh, the Colmont OHV Park. Um, so let me read you from uh, Roger um, about stuff going on. First of all, he said, uh, we hope to have a big volunteer crew here tomorrow to continue work, which will be today. So probably will not be online for the meeting. Work continues. The bathhouse outside walls are up waiting to get corner blocks filled with concrete, then the roof, and they've started graveling the parking area. Uh, with several miles of trails flagged out waiting for cutting and dozer work. The city is raising money for water line and three quarter mile access road as a grant, as the grant would not pay for either. There are a lot of costs for a uh, small town not covered by the grant, hoping to open late spring, early summer. Still a lot of pieces coming together. I can't wait to have um, uh, our first meet and ride at the Colmont OHV Park. They had a groundbreaking. A lot of the uh, 
Southern members were there at the ground breaking that had been working on this project forever. We have a grant application um, for the Colmont OHV Park. Uh, this is from Roger. Uh, so let me read you the grant, uh, the grant uh, request. Um, the city of Colmont, Tennessee is building OHV Park with RTP construction grant and hopes to open this spring or early summer. Under the state of Tennessee rules, the grant cannot be used for camping related items. This leaves the city needing help with two projects. The first is the pavilion, the Southeast Toyota Land Cruiser Association, STLCA. They have purchased a 40 by 84 by 12 foot pavilion, which is what you're seeing in the picture. Um, for $8,000, which is currently being erected, Southern um, Volunteers. The second project is installing um, uh, six hookups with the estimate for the project around $18,000. So um, STLCA is donating $8,000 and we're going to take the lead on the project. They've got a licensed electrician, Robert Parker, has volunteered to oversee the project. And um, he said, we understand the normal grant limit is 5,000, but in the past board have approved larger grants. So we're, they're requesting $10,000. Uh, our plan, if we cannot obtain total funding is install water line and all electro conduit, as many electrical power pedestals. We have funds, pull wire and install remaining pedestals when we can raise additional funds. Uh, we'd really like to be able to compete the project before the grand opening is this the first motorized RTP project by a local government in Tennessee and we expect a large turnout of state and local officials. That is a, uh, that is a grant request um, by, uh, by Roger and the um, Colmont OHV Park. Um, so that would be help. Uh, so, do we have any comments, questions about the uh, Colmont OHV? I'll open it up for questions. Hey Jay, this is Doyle. Hey Doyle. What does the um, yeah what what do the officers uh, board of directors recommend on on uh, the uh, grant request? Right now, we're we're recommending just the five thousand dollars. We have the we have the five thousand dollars that is coming in from the meet and greet ride that is allocated to our grant program. That so we that that's actually designated for our grant program. So we'd like to put that um, to use there. I don't think we can do the full ten thousand that he's asking for. Um, so we're currently recommending $5,000. Hey, Jay, this is Gary. I, I would agree with that. Take the uh, money we get from one land use project to help with the next on grant project. I think that's a good idea. Right. And it and it's money designated to our grants. So, I mean, the money came in specifically allocated to grants, not to the other other projects. This is scary again, and I know I've been keeping up with the uh, Colmont thing on Facebook and just from other folks, and I, I think I'm right on this. I know Griff and Gunner spent some time down there, uh, Brent Mann, Steve Melton, Roger, uh, several others that I can't, the names escape me right now, but a lot of long-time Southern members, you know, are coming out and really participating and making this happen, and I think it's a really good representation. Right, I th I think so. I, and and this is a long project that that is long overdue, and it's and it's uh, good for the community and good for the area. And uh, you know, uh, yes, we're putting in a lot of lot of uh, volunteer labor. Um, so, any other any other comments? Hey, this is Dave Logan. Uh, I, I think this is great and I think we should support this. Um, but I'd also suggest that they look at other sources of grants. So you have the BFG Outstanding um, Award Grant, uh, Trail Grants, you've got Tread Lightly, you've got Quadratech, you've got Rugged Ridge. There is more money available in other grants if they reach out to these folks. 
Right. I'll, I'll talk to Roger about that, making sure he reaches out to other folks. Um, you know, we're, we're not, we're not the only person out there awarding grants. So, um, and I, this is, you know, this is probably not the only thing that they're going to come up to realize that the RTP funds can't be used for. They also have three levels of bureaucracy. Uh, I know to build this bathhouse, they had to have, the plans had to be signed off and, and the gravel parking lot had to be signed off by the federal government, by the state government, by the local government. Sorry, Hyde. And by the, by the time that they ended up with everything that the plans cost like $100,000 just to build a bathhouse. I mean, you know, sometimes when you get so many bureaucrats in there, it just it just causes. Now, luckily, that is covered by the RTP grant. <laughs> they don't have to, to come out. So, um, AJ, after, this scary yeah. one. Uh, I know it's I know it's premature, uh, but it is something to kind of look at as Colmont takes place. The buildings are built, the provisions are up, and the trails are there. Uh, that at some point, Southern look at maybe possibly doing an event down there. Oh, absolutely. Um, I would like to have, I would, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit too early to try to schedule something because we don't exactly know an opening date. I mean, I would love to have a spring meet and ride there, but it may be summer, just depends on how quickly they can get um, get um, open. Um, but yeah, I knew it'd be a little premature, but it is something to definitely think. Oh yeah, it's going to be as, as soon as we as soon as I have a date, we will get it out there and get something going because it's going to it's going to be a lot of fun. So Al, are you there? Gary Hyatt. Al, Al is here, sir. Al, I have a poll. All right, just to uh, Hideaway. There's one to approve this grant. Now, um, just a just a side note, we are streaming this. We are streaming this live on Facebook. So if you looking at us live on Facebook, you cannot part you can just, you, you, you can't, it's harder to ask questions and harder to whatever, but you have to be on the Zoom call <laughs> poll. This is just a, um, uh, the, the, please remember folks, if, if you're not to mute yourself. Um, but if you're watching on Facebook, you're, you're, you know, it's static. You can't, you can't, you know, ask. Redmond. So, um, Al, are you getting a poll? No, up? Martin. I mean, I'm about to Hey, Jay. Jay I, I think a... he might want to mute everybody. Right. Yeah. Redmond, no, don't mute Martin. Me. Don't do it. Hey, Jay, I have a question. Hey, you know, no doubt. Hey, you know. How do I mute? No doubt. How on earth do you mute all these cons? Fuck's sake. Go on, Keith Earls. Let me. Do it, Jay. Is it okay? Yeah. Can you... No, he's still up here. I've said. I think we're in the wrong meeting. I think so, too. Yeah. If you are not in the Southern Four Wheel Drive annual meeting, can you please leave the meeting? Thank you. Sorry, yes, I'll leave sir. It. Yes, sir. Got you out. <sighs> okay. So, Jay, you're muting. You're unmuted now. Can you hear me, Jay? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, so I'll put the I'll put the poll up. We have had quite a few people. We've got thirty five people online right now, and some people came on after we did our our we we talked about only Southern members being allowed to vote. So we'll ask that if people are online and they're not a member of Southern Four Wheel Drive uh, Association, uh, please don't vote. Just just that simple. So um, we are we are 
I think there's a uh, on the poll. I put a three thousand and a five thousand and a zero, or or we need more information for the grant uh, for the poll. Um, we are recommending the five thousand um, dollars. That's that's what I recommend, and so. Um, also, remember, I think I said this, but we had people in between. If you're on the, uh, if you're on Facebook Live, you can only watch, so you need to be on the Zoom call to uh, to participate with that. So, so we'll we give people about one minute to vote here. Okay. We've already got a majority. We've got one no and twenty three yeses. Okay. Seventy eight percent have voted. We're up to four premium members. Actually, five premium member votes here. Uh, Al, did you hear that? We've got five premium votes for over over at Doyle bunches. I I, I see I see Doyle uh, and Gary. So guys, if you've got five votes, who else you got in there? Oh, I don't need to see them. <laughs> Just tell me. <laughs> yeah, we have hey. we have Marie, oh, hey. Carol, and we have Chelsea. Okay. Okay. Five more seconds. Anybody else need to vote? Here we go. Polls ended. I'll share the results. So we have 29 people that voted for the $5,000 uh, grant. We had one person that wanted to do 3000 and we have one person that voted no. The 29 that voted uh, for the 5000 we still need to add uh, four more for the people that are up there with Dole. Right. So and Jay, I, Jay, I think you piced. All right. And after, um, after we'll just double check, make sure everybody's, you know, I don't think we have to worry about it, but I think uh, we have to make sure everybody's a truly a member. And I think we can yeah. until after the meeting. I'll have the ability to take this list and break it down by who voted for what, and then bounce that against a membership list to make sure we're good. Okay, just want to make sure we do things correctly. So, all right, I will get in touch with Roger, and um, but he's not going to get the money until I get the five thousand dollars. So it, it may be a week or two. So, hey, I have, Jay, I have a quick question. This is Paul. Hey, Paul. How's it going? I'm on my lunch. All right, good. Thanks for joining. I just wanted to ask on the Colmont thing is. Can I do anything at Lowe's to can maybe get a discount for the bathroom stuff or any kind of discount for them? Um, we can uh, let's take this offline, but what we can do is we can talk to uh, you and I can talk to Roger. Okay. See what types of things they need. Okay. Because uh, I, you know, some of this is federally funded through the RTP stuff, and so they might have different way. I don't, I don't know how that works, but sure. let's offline, and we can, we would be glad to, uh, to look at that. Sure. Okay, I'll go back to mute and just listen. Okay. Yeah. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's great. We can make sure that uh, you know if you can give a break and help out. Um, I'll get you with Roger, and we can do that. All right, let's see okay. what's on. Just, All just, right. Just a second. Jay, yeah. Yeah. my name comes up as Coastal Aries because I have to do the meetings for them, but it's it's Jack Litchin, Al, Jack Litchin. Okay. You got, you got that, Al? I see Thanks. Al's got a thumb up, thumbs up. Got it. Okay, um, the, let's talk about our, our next area. Um, I've got some, uh, is recreation. So, you know, our three main points are, are um, education, conservation, recreation. 
We have hit it out of the park with our education. We've got you know our grant program for our conservation, which is going good. And uh, normally for our recreation, we have two big main events, uh, Trail Fest and Dixie Run. Um, of course, with 2020, uh, we had to cancel Trail Fest 17. After 17 years, we had our first cancellation of canceling due to COVID. Now, I will tell you, the board wrestled with it until, until we were forced by, you know, when the, when the states shut everything down, I mean, it kind of made our um, decision easy, but we wrestled with it because we went back and forth of, you know, it's an outside event, you know, your social distance in the vehicle, you know, but uh, so that had a profound effect on our income for the year because we lost, you know, everything on, um, on Trail Fest. Uh, we were not going to cancel Dixie Run, um, but we had to scale it back. We had to try to figure out um, how to have Dixie Run in a socially distanced, uh, limited more capacity. Um, we did not have, because of the social distancing, because of the COVID, we didn't have a lot of the um, other activities. We, we actually did away with kids games. We didn't have the uh, radio uh, control crawl. Um, we didn't have movie night. We didn't have anything going on. Uh, at the same time, we were at a new location trying to figure out all, all the stuff. Um, so I think we pulled off a good Dixie run. We had some glitches. I will be honest with you. There was, there was some, uh, some uh, major glitches that uh, I think we're going to work through. So um, uh, that was um, Trail Fest and Dixie Run. Now let me let me move to next year, unless people want to talk about Dixie Run, uh, the past Dixie Run, because we're going to move forward. Do we have any questions about um, uh, Dixie Run this past year or Trail Fest that didn't happen? I'll open it for questions. Nope. Okay. So I will then move to the next slide. So I don't know what we call this. I'm just quite, currently right now calling it Trail Fest 17.1. Um, you know, because we had to cancel Trail Fest 17. Is it still Trail Fest 17? Um, uh, we have already got the date. It's going to be April 30th to May 2nd. Um, it will be at Adventure Off-Road Park in Kimball, Tennessee. So mark it down on your calendar. And I am very happy to report that uh, Michael Richardson, who is um, the head uh, chief bottle washer for American Jeep Club Project, has stepped up to be our event coordinator for Trail Fest 2021. Um, Michael, are you there? Are you out there? I'm sorry to do this to you. I apologize that we're making you the event coordinator, but uh, you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take it all the responsibility on your shoulders. Uh can you hear me, Jay? Yep, I got you. Okay. Yeah, I've just been sitting here quietly listening. Um uh, Basically, all I can say is uh, it's an honor, and uh, I thank everyone for giving me the opportunity. Um, we've been running the um, American Jeep Club project for five years, and I've been doing that for uh, successfully for uh, without any uh, 5013Cs or anything like that straight up. So hopefully... Um, if the COVID lifts and everything that we can, uh, we can make this event successful and uh, looking forward to working with everybody. Um, I will touch base with you and Al later on, on um, some details and stuff, but we'll cover that later. Yep, absolutely. Um, so that's what I, I'm excited. We've got an event coordinator. We've got the event. Uh, we've got the park nailed down. Um, I think it's going to, I think, it, and we've got the date, so mark it on your calendars uh, to be there. 
Um, and I think uh, I think we're going to have a, a a good time. If you would like to uh, to step up and help, Michael is going to need help. Um, we what we would like to do is um, uh, go back to your clubs, see what you would like to help with. I know that my club, the Georgia Bounty Runners, um, has in the past four years have done the um, the you know help with the raffle and the MC in of the event. Um, I, we have our GBR meeting tonight. I'll be asking them what they would, do they still wanna do that? Do they wanna move over to tech inspection or do they wanna do uh, registration or they wanna do, you know, kids games again, or do we wanna, you know, just help with, you know, picking up, you know, uh, the campground after the event. We'll just figure out, um, uh, you know, so if your club has something that you would like to have it step up and do, reach out to Michael. So and, and reach out quick because you know some of the prime spots are going to go are going to go fast. Um, so if your club just you know just wants to do kids games and thinks we can do a great job with kids games, uh, reach out to Michael and we can we can coordinate and make that happen. If you don't have Michael's information, reach out to me because um, we really want to make uh, Trail Fest a fabulous uh, event again, because we, you know, you lose momentum when you have to uh, cancel one event. So I don't know whether we call it 17.1. Do we, we, we go ahead and just say it's 18? Um, you know, what, what, do we, what do we call? I've been to every Trail Fest since we started uh, Trail Fest. Um, uh, so... Um, Do you mind if I interject for just a second, Jay? Sure, absolutely. Um, I would like to give everybody an opportunity if anybody has any questions for me. Um, I'd be glad to uh, answer them the best that I can right now. And um, if anybody's doing any jotting down or anything, if you're wanting to reach out to me, uh, you can reach me on my cell phone, 706-270-2875, um, Facebook, Facebook. Uh, you know all that all that other jazz but uh or like jay said uh reach out to him and uh, he can give me a shout but um i'm looking forward to working with everybody but if anybody has any questions feel free all right any comments about trail fest hey michael oh. hey michael this is amy um, I will pass along to you in an email all the uh, former Trail Fest plans that we have as far as rides, schedules, and all that stuff. I'll, I'll pass that on to you. Yes, Michael, Amy is a very good one. About, um, events at, at AOP. Cause she puts, you know, she'll, she'll be putting on one that's right before our event, the soldier's child. And so she'll, she'll have everything, you, every, everybody you need to talk to. So she's a good one to, uh, to bend an ear. Sorry, Amy, I did that to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm going All to go right. back. I'm going to go back and mute. And if you have anything, just yell at nope. me. Yeah. All right, I will. Thanks, thanks, Michael, for uh, for stepping up. That is that is fabulous. All right, let's move on to Dixie Run. This year will be Run thirty five. This will be the thirty fifth annual Dixie Run. I am so excited. This is my. I know Trail Fest is fun. Dixie Run is my most favorite event of the year. It is. The event, if you could only do one event, sorry, Michael, if you could only do one event, it is Dixie Run. I love Dixie Run. This year, we are happy to be back at Winrock Park. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be the first weekend in October. The leaves are going to be beautiful. The weather is going to be fabulous. Um, Winrock Park, Oliver Springs, Tennessee. Make your plans now. Go ahead, book a cabin, book your campsite, because they are probably going to be booked up quick. I'm very excited. We have got a event coordinator of Ashley Warren and Paul is going to uh, step up and help. He just can't say no when it comes to Dixie Run. So um, I, I am excited. I think um, we can go back to having our other events. They've got a radio controlled course right out front 
that we can have um, that again. We can have uh, the kids games again about behind the pavilion. We can, you know, there's, there's so much more that we can add because we had to have a scaled back Dixie run this past year. And I'm seeing so much we can, we can uh, add to Dixie run. I am so excited to have it back at Winrock. Uh, Brent is a, uh, uh, the, the land manager at, at Winrock is a past president of uh, Southern Four Wheel Drive Association. So he takes care of us uh, dealing with him on, on everything we need. We get to use hollow, it's just a, um, a, a great place. Ashley, Paul, are you on? Can you, uh, can you, can you uh, come on and say anything while, while they're unmuting themselves? I will say again, now's the time to reach out to Ashley and Paul. Um, if you are interested in doing one of, the, uh, one of the jobs, we would love to have your uh, club step up. Um, the same, the same stuff that we need for Trail Fest, we need for Dixie Run. So if your club would like to try to, uh, try to help out with uh, registration, help out with tech inspection, help out um, leading trail rides, doing some excursion rides. There's, there's so much excursion rides. There's the Nemo Tunnel and the train. There's the prison. I mean, that's just to, not to say all the trails that are, are in Windrock. Um, then, um, you know, maybe, you know, I'm wondering if we can talk rock solid into doing a meet and three um, dinner again, because, um, you know, we can actually serve food, hopefully by uh, next October. That would be aw uh, uh, awesome. One year um, at Dixie Run, rock solid uh, cooked everybody dinner. I thought that was, that was fabulous. I'm not throwing y'all under the bus, rock solid. So don't, uh, don't say anything. So Ashley and Paul, are y'all uh, are y'all on? I haven't seen you unmute yourself. Uh, yes. Oh, all right. Ashley, <laughs> tell, us, tell us about yourself and what what you know, Dixie Run. So for me, it was a no brainer just to step up. Um, I've been in events, coordinating, um, designing, coming up with them since two thousand and three, um, and Jeeps are a passion of mine too. So it was a no brainer to do both together. Um, I have been to three Dixie runs and love them. And so for me, it was a no brainer. I'm really excited to be more involved and um, more than just the fun aspect. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'm excited. Any questions about Dixie run or, you know, if you have anything, you can reach out to Ashley, you can reach out to me. If your club would like to step up and help do something, we always need club clubs to help um, do stuff, um, please reach out to one of us. We will be forming the Dixie Run and the Trail Fest committees, probably not today because I've you know, just got a lot going on, but I'll probably form the committee tomorrow. Um, uh, we usually do it on Facebook Messenger, so I'll probably have all those committees. And if you would like to be on the planning committee to help out you reach out to us, let us know. We can use, we can always use the help and we can always use your help. So I wanna thank Paul, Ashley, Michael for stepping up to help our events um, be better. Thank you all so much. Hey Jay, I'm here for just a second. Um, it would be nice if we could get more volunteers to do less like time vol volunteering, I'm trying to say, I don't know if that makes sense, but there was a lot of people that devoted their whole Dixie run and volunteered. It would be nice if some clubs could step up so we could all get some time in. Absolutely. And that's what I'm asking now is to try to Go back to your club now. We have, we know it's in October. So um, I plan on asking the Georgia Bounty Runners what they would like to do. They will probably keep with the, um, uh, with the raffle because I think we do a pretty good job doing that, uh, the raffle and the MC. Um, I think everybody who, who, who went last year, um, you know, I thought, thought uh, you know, just organizing it and all that kind of stuff. 
um, although they may decide we do registration or something. So I'll, I'll ask my club. So I'd ask everybody else that has a club meeting or club Christmas party coming up, ask your club, what would you like to do to step up? There's all kinds of stuff um, to do. Like I said, there, you know, there's kids games, there's, you know, other events, there's signage, just getting there early and putting up all the signs um, and taking them down, making sure that we take them down is always a, uh, 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 an important thing to do that the small club can do that. Uh, so you don't have to have a big club to uh, participate. So reach out to your club, ask uh, what they can do and let, uh, let Michael, Ashley, Paul, myself, any of the board members uh, to, uh, to do something. So that would be, that would be great. So thank you guys. Thank you. I am looking forward to a great 2021 and some fabulous events. We got some, we've got some great stuff going here in Southern. Thank you. Side. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity for letting me do this. Yeah, that's what happens when you win, you know, the 2020. Southern right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back to work. <laughs> All right. All right, John Plaza, are you out there? John. Absolutely, I am. Let me see if I can start my video going again here. <coughs> there we go. Can you hear me? Wow, I got everything, everything I got froze. I still have you. Okay, good deal, good deal. So uh, I, I think this goes more under branding than uh, t-shirt sales. And there's a, there's a couple things I want to start out by saying on all this. If we can uh, each, as a group, try to change one thing a year, just one thing, each individual person will come out a lot further. We don't have to tried to tackle a mountain at once. Um, so this past year was a really weird year. Um, I, I tried to help in various areas and something that we keep, keep falling short on is uh, t-shirt sales and uh, swag, let's say. And, and the most important thing about this is branding. Um, I can't see a picture of my uh, what I got on my screen, but I want to show you guys something. If you guys can see that, that's a really, really old Southern Four Wheel Drive logo. Um, I think the only one older than that has Florida on it. And we, we tried to get away from that uh, several years ago. Um, just, you know, there, there was a lot of talk. It was hard to get away from that. What, where we have come now is we got a really cool symbol. Uh, we want people out there wearing it. And the reason this is, is when you're sitting around the campfire or you're sitting at your club meeting, we want you to bring up Southern Four Wheel Drive Association and what we're doing to help because this is all about the members. It's not about us. It, it, it's about the members keeping everything open, promoting, uh, you know, the, the four wheel drive lifestyle and uh, the multi generational lifestyle there is now um swag is probably one of the easiest and most important ways to do that um i've never done this before I, absolutely um so it's been a learning curve for me probably it's taken me longer than uh most people but what, what i've tried to do is get out there two product lines one is a cheaper product line that, you know, is your $15, 12, 15, $20 sell point, and then a better product line for those people that want the really nice stuff, really comfortable shirts. And I, I want us to be able to, when we're out promoting Southern Full Wheel Drive Association, to be able to wear something nice to, to really represent us. Uh, wow. What I saw happening is every time that we had something come up, we'd, we'd be going somewhere. We'd go Vista print this one time or this guy down the road or 
you know, th this, that, or the other, and it, it was really complicated. So what I'm trying to do is set up one place where we can go and order stuff and open a store a few times a year. We'll make certain changes each time that we open this, but, but somewhere we can go time after time where, you know, I've been around this since 1995. I've been doing the board stuff since about 2011, 2012. And, you know, I might not be in this five, five years from now. I hope I am. I mean, I plan on it, but, you know, I might be at a different level. So I want to be able to pass this along to the next person and make the transition easy. I also wanted somewhere that we could go where when it comes to Trail Fest and Dixie Run, all we have to do is send them our graphics. The, the other part to think of about this is back a few years ago, people would store this stuff in their garage and then it would go to garage to event, back to a garage. Then we'd have somebody change over and it have to go from this garage to that garage. And so, sometimes it's from somebody in South Carolina to somebody in Alabama. And that's not the easiest thing to do. So I, our price points of this are going to be a little bit higher than what it has been in the past. And the t-shirt business has changed, but we're not managing product at that point or shrinkage or anything else. I'm trying to get this to one to one ratio. The prices, if you click on that link or punch that in online, this, so this is hard to explain to everybody. Technically today, if you went to that store and ordered something, you would be purchasing it. The problem is, is the prices I put out there were if we ordered a hundred products. The more we go over a hundred and get closer to a thousand, the cheaper it gets. The price below a hundred is more expensive. So we kind of need to not order until the store goes live. They cannot fulfill to Christmas right now. Um, I, I'd like to see this store go live. And, and this, is, this is a topic for discussion is when this store goes live and how long it stays live for. I think we should open it personally before each meet and greet ride and close it about the week before that. Everybody, that way everybody can have their Southern four wheel drive swag. Um, and also, the, the, this was not developed, I did not develop this with these people for Southern to make a large profit margin off this. The idea of this is to get out, um, you know, our branding so people talk about this. Uh, and with, with that, I think I covered everything. Um, and. I'm open for questions because I'm sure there's going to be a few, and I hope I can answer them. All right. Well, I'm not. well, John, I don't, I don't, I don't want to let you go without having to answer a question. Did uh, if 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 we order, if I order a shirt and a hat and a mug, uh, is it shipped directly to me? Yes. When the store closes. They'll process it, they'll make the stuff and then ship it directly to me, right? That's correct. And the expensive part of this that you, and let me go into this. The expense of this is setting up the machines for the people. So the front of the shirt that you see in color there, if, can you see my shirt right now with the just stamp logo on it? Yes. It, it, it's cheap to produce that one color that, it takes the printer time to set up this logo into the machine. So when you see multiple colors on there, each time they have to set up the individual color to change those colors as it goes. Um, so that's why you see a higher price on that. I, that, that was really, you know, I kept going back and forth with them on there uh, about that, but so when the store closes, so let's say if we open the store for a month and we open it January 1 to, uh, you know, January 30th, let's just say. On midnight of the 30th, the store closes. The next day, everything goes in production. 
And then as that produces, everything gets done, it ships. I've used this company before uh, and that's why I wanted to use them. And also they're only a few miles from me. So if there's any problem, I can go down the road and knock on their door and take care of it, and not be on hold with some foreign company trying to do this. This is an American owned company and I, and it's a small business and both of those were important to me. John, you, you said that you had a hundred piece uh, price point and then it goes yeah. down from that, but now talking about colors. So when the order comes in for one yellow t-shirt and 99 gray t-shirts, we wouldn't break the hundred mark because you need a hundred on each color. Not each color, cumulative. So, so you're that, saying one hundred. So you're saying hundred of an item, like a T-shirt or something like that, regardless of. No, gross, gross, total. John, it sounds like you're still using screen printing. I have a T-shirt business, and I'm I'm mean, actually using uh, direct to garment printing. And this, yes, this is still screen printing, but like I said, I had not in this business. This, this is not what I do for a living. I just saw something that needed a gap filled and I went after it. Understood. Right, so if I order a yellow shirt, the jacket and a mug, that's three items. Correct. That's three items to our hundred. And the most important thing she had to say is when we go live on this store, we need to share, reshare, share again, because that's that's basically where Southern Four Wheel Drives go make its money from is the more we sell of this, the greater our profit margins go be. And and there's not a whole lot of pro if you looked at these charts that how they do their sales on these, it would make your head spin. I think I've sent it to Jay and uh, the board of the directors and it's, uh, I, it's, it's not a simple chart, but I understand the reason they have to do it that way after about a 30 minute phone call with them. But there's no monetary risk to Southern. If we only sell three shirts, it's just, we don't make any money, right? Uh, well, that if we only sold three shirts, they would have to go back and sell those at the price point of less than a hundred, which would raise the price to the consumer. So the advertisement that is in there would be different. The advertised price would be different than the actual sell price because it would go to the less than a hundred. Does that make sense? It makes sense but it's a little bit a little bit concerning if i if i go order five items thinking they're going to be ten dollars a piece and then they end up being twelve dollars a piece uh it's it's we're going to have some not so happy customers we don't need to iron that out right now thanks yeah. for sharing the concept with us and we've got I, a little time to iron out the details I think just alone, and the reason I went on the hundred dollar price or the hundred item price point, I think alone on this meeting that we have right now is that uh, we would hit over a hundred just with the uh, forty people that are on this meeting. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. I I think we could hit a hundred. Um... I mean, because I, I know I would buy at least four or five items, just of the items that are on the screen up there. And only one of them is yellow. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I can adjust more to the store as needed each time. And if somebody says, hey, I want this style of shirt, or I like this, or I like that, you know, send me an example. I can send it to them. They have... When I initially asked them to send me stuff, it was so overwhelming that I couldn't even I couldn't even go through it all. So So what what would when would we um when when are we thinking of starting the store? 
That's what I need to know. I, I mean, I, I would assume that we would either kick it off. Uh, right, right now, before Christmas, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to kick it off. You guys can go online right now and see everything that I set up. I can make a few adjustments to this. I don't really want to, but I can. Um, with that being said, I don't see why we wouldn't kick it off for New Year's, uh, kick it off during a tech net. I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes or anything there, but I think we need to iron out just a few details and then go live with it. Hey, John, just yes. from somebody that sells hundreds of shirts a year for different organizations through pre-orders, give it at least four weeks for that window to be open because I, I would like to blame a lot of stuff on my middle school kids that I'm the principal of, but adults are horrible about forgetting to do things. So I would definitely open it for a month at a time. So if you did it quarterly, basically do it in January, do it again in April that way, you know, or maybe shift it into March a little bit because you'll want to change up and make sure that I haven't gone on to look, to see all the products that you have, but um definitely leave that four week window and you know you push it hard the first week and keep coming back to it but then that last week push is really important because people forget to do things it's just the it's just human nature so i would i would leave it open for a while not two weeks is not long enough i completely agree this is gary i understand the reasoning behind opening and close it uh, I wish there was a way to leave it open to where, you know, somebody gets their premium membership, they're excited and they want to do a point of purchase right then. Uh, maybe as we go forward later on down the line, maybe it's something we could work out, but, or somebody becomes a new member, you know, you get a new club come in and, and that kind of thing. And maybe it's on an off month, you know, but somebody gets excited. I, I, I wish we could leave it up all the time, but I understand the reason. Hey. And if somebody knows a company that can do that, I, I would love to know about it. But like I said, I went through legwork and I went through somebody that uh, we, we used before. We use this for St. Jude's it, It's who we use this store through. And, uh, I, you know, their qualities there. That, that's one thing that concerns me as well is, is quality of the product. But I agree. I want to leave the store open year round. And then when we but they, they just can't do it. I mean. And I, I understand as a business why they can't do it. And I do too. I'm just saying we look further down the road, but I think the uh, the products that I see on the screen here really, really do look good. I have to concur, Jay. I think your yellow T-shirt looks awesome there. But, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I agree with you. I think out even on this call, I can see about three items I would like to purchase today. So I think you can, I think the sales get kicked off right, but, but I do like what I see merchandise. So the bottom of Southern four wheel drive website, there's items under shop or store. I mean, I think there should be a tab on the top um, of the website that says shop, but there's two items that everyone can purchase at any time. Is there a way to add more? For those people that are wanting to get swag right away. So it, I, I don't know how the store works on the Southern Four Wheel Drive website right now. Uh, that's somebody that we used in the past and, and technically I don't think there's anything there right now. There's a red shirt and a youth shirt and then uh, the black one or the classic one is sold out. Um, and that's, and that would yeah, go to I, merchandising, but I think that stock that we have right now from what we printed from events. That's right. Yeah. That, that stuff there uh, that is uh, basically been three, two, two, three years at least now since it's been printed. And there's very, 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 very little quantity of it remaining. Um, we've had at one time, uh, we did experiment with online, um, fulfillment direct, um, kind of in the same manner that we did our premium, uh, membership, uh, order fulfillment, which is just 
one person taking boxes and packaging them and printing labels at home um, and sending them from their home uh, out to individuals, you know, periodically as the orders would come in until we pretty much depleted that inventory and uh, had not refilled um, that stock because there was a lot of discussion in different directions such as this one here. And uh, it did become a little bur a bit of a burden, as John had mentioned, uh, in, the, in the logistics aspect of it when we were managing merchandise inventory that would be carried from events and then also sold online and keeping that continuity of the inventory was challenging. So uh, I think there was always a hope for a better solution. And, and to me, this is the, this is the next step, not, this isn't the final step. This is just a next step. Um, like I said, this is not my business. I, I don't know a ton about it, but I, you know, I'm trying to get us in going in this direction. We're stuck here. And, and if we, we're not doing anything, if, if we're not moving forward. Right. All right. So um, I know that uh, in the chat, uh, there's been a couple of other other ideas thrown out. I know Dave's doing some on the side and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but I like what I'm seeing here. Uh, I like the quality already, but um, let's, let's, you know, especially since we can't get a Christmas delivery, um, you know, I think a, a January kickoff would be good. Uh, a January kickoff would be good of some kind, whether we do it this way or a, a, a direct printed way or something. Um, so let's let's work towards that. Uh, a, a January thing. We can look at what uh, what what other people have, but um, if necessary, we can do this. Say January to January thirtieth. Let's get your products going, spend a week pushing it, spend that last week pushing it, push it really hard, get everybody, get their, uh, get their swag so that they can, uh, you know, show off their new Southern stuff at Trail Fest. Yes, no, any other comments? All right, John, thanks for all the hard work and putting together stuff. I've been wanting merchandise. I need- Absolutely. I need stuff with Southern on it, you know? And, and, you know, great way to suck up, you know, get a yellow shirt out there. Yeah, that, that was the main feedback that I got after initially finding all this stuff was not enough yellow. Right. <laughs> I, I wonder who gave you that feedback. I, I think it was Aaron. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, it is time to, to uh, talk about elections. Um, this is our, this is our uh, current board of directors structure. We have a president, we have vice president, secretary, treasurer, director of conservation, director of education, director of rec recreation membership, business development, and communication. So our 2020 board is, uh, the president is me. We have co-vice presidents of Aaron and John. The secretary position is open. Um, treasurer is Ted. Uh, conservation is Robert Palmer. Um, education is Al Sweeney and Michael Morrison. Recreation is Currently, Pam Dollar, Moose Halstead, and Amy. And uh, business development is Connor, and membership is Bo Rosa. So the way it works uh, is, um, and that's a picture of a Dixie Run uh, kids games. I figured since elections, we like to stick our head in a bucket. Um, it it should, be, uh, should be good. So positions are for a two year term and we elect half the board each year. So up for election right now is uh, vice president, uh, director of conservation, uh, the director of business development, the uh, director of communication and our secretary is open. We have nobody who has stepped up and said, I will be the secretary at all. 
which means I have to take the notes and, um, you know, do the minutes myself. So um, that's where we that's where we are right now. So I've got a few people who have uh, stepped up to say they want to do this. So um, John Plaza and Aaron Roddy both said they would step up and be vice president again. Uh, David Terfey has said he would step up and be the director of conservation. Uh, Darlene Dombrowski has said she would step up and be the director of business development. Uh, Anna Satterfield has said she would love to step up and be the director of communications. And we still have the open secretary position. So um, does anybody have anything to say about uh, um, our, our current slate of folks that are elected? Any of the uh, folks want to talk about what's, uh, uh, talk about themselves? Darlene, Anna, David, we all know John and Aaron because they're current. Um, remember you're muted. Hey guys, it's Anna. Um, oh. I am just super excited. Um, I love Southern and what they stand for. So I'm willing to help out in any way that I can. Um, just really looking forward to getting to know everyone and seeing where Southern moves. All right, thanks Anna. And this is Darlene, and um, I feel the same way as Anna. I'd like to get in uh, more things with Southern, um, enjoy everything that we've done um, so far, and just want to be a little more involved. And um, thinks it would be a great way to meet um, a lot more people too, and um, hopefully head us in a, a bigger direction. Right, David, are you still on? Are you still on there? I am, and hey guys, this is David Tarafe. I've been with uh, on the board for Friends of Uari for a while and been able to be involved with Southern and with some great things uh, in the Uari Mountains and looking forward to helping more and seeing what, what we can expand uh, together with Southern. All right, thanks. Um, I guess with that, we can vote. Um, if Al's still on here, Al, are you there? I think so. All right, there should be there should be a poll. And okay, let me step back and remember we're on Facebook Live. So um, Facebook Live, y'all are only watching. Y'all can't participate. Sorry, guys, but um, only the folks that on Zoom can participate with the polls. Also, we would ask that only members vote. Um, so if you're on and and not a member. Um, you know, please, please, um, you know, don't vote and we will be auditing the, the, the polling after the fact, because I'm sure there'll be, you know, a, a mandatory recount, probably lawsuits going against the, the, the elections and, and all that kind of stuff, because, you know, somebody's not going to concede. Oh, I've logged on four times, so I'm ready to vote. You're logged on four times. Vote early and vote often. You got the you got it you've got it up because I can't see it on my side. There it is. All right. I am uh uh, looking forward to some fresh blood on the board of directors, some new eyes and some new ideas. I think we are headed in the right direction. We've got some great things going. How many votes for Mickey Mouse do we have? Well, we had a write in vote for president, and it's got oh, okay. unbelievable traction here. <laughs> uh, 
we we've got ninety six percent of the people voted. Everybody but one has voted. Um, I'm gonna couple twenty seven out of twenty seven um, voted. Here we go. Polls are closed. Results are shared. Darlene got one hundred percent. David Terrafay got ninety six percent. One. He probably okay. didn't vote for himself. Probably. Pound, Pound got 100. Anna got 93%. Aaron got 89%. John got 81%. And there was 4% voted no. So, I mean, proposed candidates won by an overwhelming majority. All right, just like a good communist uh, country. Oh, sorry, keep my mouth shut. Um, all right, so what I, um, our, it, you know, if, if my slide is correct, that uh, the poll is right, our 2021 Southern Ford, Ford Drive Board of Directors is, uh, is President Jay Bird with John Plaza and Aaron Vice Presidents. We have a, we still need a, a secretary. So if anybody would like to step up, we have Al Sweeney and Michael Morrison as uh, education, Pam Dollar for recreation, Bo for membership, Darlene for business development, and Anna is um, communication. So I think that that is a, a good strong board. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a great 2021. I would like to to say. Uh, thank you to the outgoing board members for all all your hard work. Um, you've done uh, you've done a lot to bring Southern up. I know sometimes you you know it it, it seems like you know you, you work and you get no recognition. I, I want to you know thank you so much for for what you've done. I want to thank the incoming board members for you know uh, stepping up to. To, to be a part of something. Hopefully we can be a part of something better, you know, leave the world a, a, a little bit better place than us. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, basically at this point, I'm ready to wrap the thing up. I just to let you know, I would uh, like to have a leadership meeting. Um, uh, if you remember, we had a leadership meeting in 2020 early on. Michael Richardson made it snow for us. Uh, we had it up and AJCP hosted us and it was fabulous. We've got a lot of work done and then it, and then COVID hit and shut the entire country down and we couldn't do anything. Um, so I'd like to have another leadership meeting. I would, I would, I would hope by that point we can have it face to face so that we can uh, try to figure out where we're going, what we're doing, what we're doing right, what we need to change. Um, also remember Trail Fest uh, is, is coming up. I wanna thank Michael Richardson for, for stepping up, um, having uh, at, at AOP April 30th to May 2nd, uh, Dixie Run, Absolutely excited about Dixie Run at Winrock October 1st to 3rd. Also, if your if your clubs would like to step up and help do something, I am asking now. You know, not waiting until you know thirty days before. Talk to your clubs, figure out what they might would like to do. Reach out to any of our event coordinators or myself or anybody on the board, uh, and we can uh, we can um, do that. With that, or do we have any um, comments or anything that we need to uh, talk about? Did something I missed? We got questions um, that we have. This is Doyle. Do you have any meet and rides scheduled this year? Right now, we do not have any meet and rides. Well, we have the meet and ride, uh, the one in November for the for, for the Daniel Boone Backcountry Byway, but we don't have anything. Um, on the calendar and scheduled at this point. We just don't know what we can do. I mean, are, are they going to shut the country back down again? We're having spikes. So um, I've got nothing scheduled for a meet and ride. Okay, this is Gary. Uh, 
I would recommend if you're going to do the leadership meeting, kind of do it on the same time frame you did last year around uh -huh. that first weekend of February. That seems to work pretty good. Okay. My 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 only concern about February is are we going to be able to meet? Because I mean, it's going to be the middle of winter. We're not going to have the vi the um, vaccine ready. Um, I mean, I'd like to do it then, but I I hate these Zoom calls. Um, well, I do too. I do too. Uh, we can hope for the best and plan for the worst, but I still think if you're going to set the tone for the year on things that need to come out. Kind of right. get January under our belt and uh, get the plan with the leadership team moving forward. And we have to right. do it Zoom. We just have to do it Zoom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. I'm saying I'll I'll try to put something together, but you know it's 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 hard when we don't know what we can and can't do, and things change. I know everybody understands that. I mean, it's it's Jay, from a Zoom. From a meeting standpoint and Zoom standpoint, this actually was a pleasant surprise. I thought it worked pretty well. Um, informative meeting and, and good communication. Yeah, it's actually been a very good meeting. Ah, thank you. Thank you. So Jay, let's give anybody else an opportunity if they want to give us some ideas we talked about needing ideas for education uh any ideas on recreation there's mentioned maybe meeting rides getting them scheduled uh and then conservation help help david with his with his efforts anybody have any comments um uh, i want to talk briefly about any of those topics or any topic Amy's not chiming in, so I guess she's happy. <laughs> All right, I want to thank I want to thank everybody for showing up, taking your Saturday away um, to do this. Southern's always been important to me. I've been a, I've been around for twenty five years now, and and. Um, you know, th this past year has been a struggle, but I think we have we have made some pretty good strides um, thinking about what we've done. Yes, you know, yeah, we're always going to have some mistakes and we're going to stumble, but the thing is, we can continue continue forward. We've got we've got great people who have stepped up in the past. We and 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 we've got people who are stepping up now. And the world is run by people who show up and um, y'all showed up and thank you so much. Uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I don't see you. Um, and um, to all the new board members, I will be getting a, a Facebook Messenger. You'll be invited into the Facebook Messengers and we'll start some different uh, subgroups you know of anybody that you would like to be a part of a uh, of you know your committee or to to help out let us know we we'll, we'll get that going and we'll get that going in the next day or two so we can start the ground running and i did one other poll jay i poll okay. i put a poll out to see who asked people to vote for the southern four wheel drive member of the year and they elected they decided pound dollar was that person for her oh, individual, right. for her individual heroic efforts and in making Dixie Run a big success. Yes. And the number of people voted was me. Oh, okay. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> what, what, did I, what did I do? Sorry, I was looking in the motor. <laughs> we'll tell her later. All right. <laughs> Don't worry, Pam. All right. Thank you all so much. We'll see you out on the trails. Go have an ice cream on me. Just send me the bill. Uh, so go have to go have some ice cream. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everyone. you guys. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.